Hey guys, really excited today to be with Charlotte Hopkins. Um, how are you doing, Charlotte? Yeah, I'm really great. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, no problem. Um, I, I reached out to Charlotte because she is really, really passionate about um, ethics and integrity in the coaching industry. She's really outspoken about it all over Facebook. Um, and, uh, you know, I know there's so much in the coaching industry that, that I know a lot of you are, are have question marks around it and just a lot of stuff around regulation and, and, and uh, what people are telling coaches and, and just like kind of a lot of lies that are going around. And uh, I, that's why you know, I, I consider you, Charlotte, like the, the spokesperson for, for these issues. Um, so I'm excited to hear um, what you have to say, what you have to share with us about all of this. Um, um, yeah, like, can you kick it off? Like, share with us your initial thoughts. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's a topic that I'm really, really passionate about. And um, that stemmed from, basically, I've been in the industry for 20 years, before it really was an industry. Um, and for 12, 12 years of those, I worked with, either directly with or through people who worked directly with people with addictions. So whilst I've been... Um, working with business coaches and business owners for a long, long time. Actually, where my real passion comes from is the support and guidance that a lot of kind of life coaches give. And, and life coaching to me is a fairly new term. And I got my own training and qualifications company where we specialize in providing personal development and professional mastery for coaches. And it was probably, I've seen the trend change over the last... I would say four or five years. I mean, there's been changes and trends in the last 10 years, but certainly in the, the, the last, even as, as close as three or four years, that trend is massively changing. And people are choosing to come into the industry because they see it as this, I feel, quite easy, quick win, mm. get rich option. And one of the things that I really struggle with with that is that often when that happens, people don't really bring and take on the responsibilities that they have that comes along with that. So I just decided that I couldn't stop. I'm quite an opinionated person. Um, it was about time that we just kind of raised the awareness around the lack of quality standards that are within the industry. And yes, I appreciate that. There's probably lots of viewers saying, yes, but we've got like, the International Coaching Federation, we've got membership associations there. However, they are quite niche and they are quite limited but actually a huge bulk of those coaches or people who would class themselves as coaches and mentors don't really know about them or they they don't really see the need to have their involvement with them so that's kind of where it started that journey for me um and since i've put myself out there as this spokesperson um and i'm not really i'm quite at spokesperson level quite yet but i'll take that compliment um, <laughs> I think one of the things that has really been noticeable is, okay, so it paints a really bad picture. So from, from the, take the, the kind of this side, when people come into the industry, they're bringing creativity, they're bringing innovation, they're really shaping up what has been quite a stagnant industry um, and has been very executive coaching level. So lots of corporation standards, um, very business focused. And then what we have is a real change and everyone will see it. You know, we can't go on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or whichever social media platform. You can't go on there without seeing multiple coaches, mentors, um, flogging their wares, if you like. But on the flip side of that, what we're also seeing are people who then are stagnant. So they might have been doing the job for a really, really long time, um, but they don't know how to keep up with this evolving industry. So they're quite dated. We then see those people who are coming in and charging quite substantial amounts of money. I mean, literally just over the last few days, I've heard about a coach who's charged, you know, five figures for 12 weeks of support. And that's, that's fine if you have that money. If you don't, that's a large amount of money to be going on. And part of my question is, I think people have got FOMO, so they've got this fear of missing out that they want to work with this kind of Insta star coach and they're not really understanding 
what that return of investment is. And that's kind of what I'm looking to do is bring in some quality standards, bring in some really measurable, tangible measures so that people don't get bitten, really. And there's just so many horror stories, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, for sure. You know, what I've noticed is that a lot of the people teaching about coaching, um, you know, they'll present themselves as someone who, who can, like, help you, um, let's say, uh, uh, with every element of the business uh, related, or with every, every element of, of, of making your coaching business. Um, but they really only talk about sales. And they really only talk about, like, everything up to getting a client. And then they won't even talk about fulfillment. Or, I mean, it's fine if you're doing like specializing in sales, but they'll, they'll frame themselves as like someone who can do everything. And then, um, and then, but really we'll only talk about sales and not even talk about fulfillment. Um, and, and that's what I've noticed um, it, um, to me is there's a lot of gurus who uh, don't mention anything about how to actually deliver your clients results. Um, and then if they're talking about selling, like it's often done in like a way that I feel sleazy about like, I don't, like, uh, it feels like this process is manipulative and, and I don't I don't feel comfortable doing it. So that's what I've noticed for me is just, like, you know, you can do sales in an authentic way, but I, um, what I've noticed is, like, there's just a lot of uh, egocentric sell, selling and not value, uh, value-oriented value selling. Yeah, I mean, it, that happens in every industry. So one of the things we talk about a lot with, with quality, for example, is that when people measure quality, they see high price and they see kind of that prestige. So we naturally, is we've kind of been molded as human beings to look at if something's low cost, then it's not going to be good quality. If something's high cost, it's going to be amazing quality. So we're naturally been molded through marketing, through sales, through just general education and life to believe. So for example, um, now I'm not a car fan, I would normally use shoes, um, but you know, Jimmy Choo shoes, which are five, six hundred dollars, um, we're told that they are the go-to shoes. Maybe a Royal mm -hmm. Brooks or I don't know, Matt, give me a high prestige car, I don't know. But we <laughs> Um, taught that that's the case and and I think what that means is we kind of go in with googly eyes so we look and go oh that person is charging this amount of money therefore they must be good um, and that's you know that's fine and I'm not knocking my goodness we're all in it to make money I'm not saying that we're not however what I would like people to start to think about is you know is that coach or that qualification or you know that purchase fit for purpose is it going to give me what i need mm -hmm. uh, is it accessible so if i'm paying fifty thousand dollars for um some a coaching practice or a training um program i really want that to be quite hand-holding i want lots of learning i want a lot of investment from that person and, you know, again, just another story of somebody who's taking legal action, they pay $30,000 for this training certificate, and it hasn't delivered anywhere near what their expectations were. Now, is that the fault of the coach or the coaching? I guess it's both. And, and I think that's, you know, again, that's kind of what we're looking to do. It's an unregulated industry, but I genuinely, genuinely believe that we can self and peer regulate this i think if we mm. start to challenge each other um you know and i'm not talking let's 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 go onto facebook and slate everybody yeah. in a certain amount of money but actually if we start to challenge we start to understand what is the quality behind the delivery then we might not hear some of the, the stories and, and i guess right. from my perspective at, at best it's a disgruntled client at worst, it's malpractice. And I was talking to a business coach um, probably about six months ago now. And he was a business coach and had no qualifications. He'd done no formal training um, in coaching practice, which I personally think is, is crazy. Um, but actually, one of the things that he'd come up with, he was dealing with a lot of mindset issues. And his client had admitted suicidal thoughts. And he had no real clear tangible um, strategies to put in place to help this, this client. So as a business coach, his client had chosen to 
you know, open up and trust him with, you know, it's quite, it's, it's hard and it's hard for that client. It's also, I've been there. I've been there where clients have told me that, you know, they, they self-harm or they got addictive um, use or they're really stressed and overwhelmed and they've got suicidal thoughts. And as a newbie, we've all been there. I remember just going, oof. But do you know the difference is this client's just paid tens of thousands of pounds for this, <laughs> this coaching session. And now this coach is, you know, talking, how are we going to take you from A to Z in their business? Now, you know, that's the kind of things that not only does that client need special support, needs to, to have additional support, but actually that coach as well needs an opportunity to reflect and protect himself or herself as well. Mm. It's got, it falls out of the boundaries really of what that person is really an expert in. Yeah. And you know, for me, it's a duty of care um, because you have a responsibility to make sure that you either work with that client um, and you have a safe exit plan or you're going to work with that client on whatever it is your expertise is, but maybe they need to go and get additional support. And actually, I think part of the issue is because coaches aren't having even awareness training around that, they just don't know. <laughs> and, and at the end of the day, what you don't know, you don't know. Um, right. And that's part of the challenge. Right. You know, why do you think it's been in the past three to four years? And I think I, I agree with you there that it's been... Um, uh, a, a different breed of coaches that have emerged in the past three to four years. Um, and, and why do you think that, that there's been a shift in kind of maybe the integrity of the industry? What do you, how would you answer that? I think there's, there's a mixture. So I kind of come from, so up until the, the coaching industry became such a big, big business, then it was very distinct. You had consultants, you had coaches, you had mentors, you had um, counsellors, um, you had therapists. It was all very easily defined. And, and I think as people have come through, and I know for a fact that there's counsellors, for example, who are um, CBT or motivational interviewing or um, NLP, for example, all of these would have been previously seen as counselling qualifications. Now, there is some regulation within the counselling industry. So I think lots of people who've come over and gone, I can charge more, I can, it can become easier, I can do it without the responsibilities. Um, so I think there's an element of genuine just, and I don't think it is lack of integrity, I just think it's making life easier. Um, mm. I also think the fact that social media has just grown and grown and grown makes it... <laughs> My, my generation didn't have, we didn't have computers, but my, <laughs> there was certainly no social media 20 years ago. And I think the gen, I can't, I don't know what they call them. I think there's the millennials and then there's generation X and generation Y, I think. Uh, I, think, I, think I think Z might be next, but I don't even, I, I think okay. Gen Y is millennials. Okay, so yeah. that generation, if you look at, as a generation, if you look at, the demands of that group of people, they're not prepared to settle. So my parents' generation went into a job, there was job security, and that's what you did. You worked really hard for a good salary if you were lucky, and then you, you retired. My generation, uh, much more kind of entrepreneurial spirited, however, there's still the protection of I kind of need to make sure that, that there's some security there. And actually, when I look at my daughter's generation who are coming through, and she's 16, um, she won't settle. And if you think of, you know, I'm, I'm nearly 40 and, and 16, you've got those 20 odd, goodness, there's 20 odd people. And actually, those generations are saying, I'm not doing what my parents did. Mm -hmm. So they're coming out of university, they're seeing these people who make it look easy. There are lots and lots yeah. of coaches. It's never easy. It's never easy. And it shouldn't be easy. It's yeah. responsibility, you know. As a coach, you need to have experience. You should have expertise. You should have skill to meet it with your profession. So not only should you be continuous in continuing your professional development in your specialism, but actually you should be continuing your, your professional development, your personal development as a coach or as a mentor, yeah. as a teacher or whatever it is. And I think when you come out and you 
you know, you look, it's been a massive learning curve for me. I have a really successful business offline and online has been a really interesting journey. Um, mm. Because I, we're not tech savvy generally. We're not, we have to learn those skills, which are just natural the different generations. So uh, many people are shouting at the screen now. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, that's that's interesting. You know, I, I noticed like on my Facebook feed, like if I scroll, if I'm if I'm on it, um, I get at least a handful of ads every day um, that that like promise me that like all the other gurus are are nonsense. I'm the one who's going to help you get from like here to here um, in terms of your business. And, and I like I developed a filter where I can no longer even trust a Facebook ad for the for the majority of cases just because it's like over and over again like saying the same thing but with a slightly different message and it, and it's really just a matter of I know how Facebook ads works like I, I, I I've, I've worked with clients on Facebook ads it's really just a matter of like you you're testing a lot of um, audience targeting you're throwing a lot of budget in there to see what people respond to and uh, really whoever pours the most money into the to that campaign they're the one that's going to get the most reach so there's something there where how Facebook, I know they're working on this because it's not the whole scandals that they've gone through in the past year, but pretty much how it works now is whoever pours the most money into the ad campaign, that's, that's who gets the most reach. And then that obviously creates integrity problems, meaning like you could, you could, you could promote whatever you want there. You can, you can, you know, and this is, this was the whole thing about the 2016 election in the U S was that there was a lot of, um, uh, like political ads going on that uh, that you can just pour money in that and then and then manipulate popular opinion. Um, uh, so yeah, there's that whole complicated thing where anyone can really reach you if they have the budget. Yeah, and and I think you know one of the things that I find really interesting is this kind of um, it almost is like a, a pyramid approach because you've got this coach who's the creative genius right at the, the top. And you've got this coach who knows how to sell, is very, has, has clearly got some kind of integrity because they're the ones who are writing everything. So they're the ones who are able to stand on a Facebook Live, talk out loud and say, blah, 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 this is, this is what I do. Right. And what, what, what some are doing and then selling down this sales funnel, selling down this, this toolkit, and you can see those people who've bought those because they don't have the ability to talk off the, the cuff because they, they might have the, the breadth of knowledge. So they might be able to talk on four, five, six, seven topics relating to their niche or to their specialism. But what they don't necessarily have is the depth. So mm. on four, five, they can't then answer those questions. And that's where for me, I, I, you know, I get it. I understand why people buy a sales funnel, my goodness, you will never catch me teaching a sales funnel. <laughs> it's yeah. my life. Um, but what you don't get is then the ability to dig deeper into that, that topic. And, and that's where people become unstuck. And it isn't a great place, not only for your clients who bought in thinking that you know your stuff, um, right. but actually you can only scratch the surface. And actually it's, it's a really stressful place to be in knowing that, you only have a toolkit that will give you 12 weeks or six weeks worth of support. But if they go off piece, you don't know what to do. And that's a really uncomfortable, overwhelming place for a coach to be in as well. Yeah, and, yeah. And I don't think you should be, we should be allowed to test on clients when they're charging thousands of pounds for that privilege. Mm. Yeah, no, totally. I think you brought up some really interesting points there about sales funnels is because we're often taught that you know all you need to do is model this um, really successful person's sales funnel i mean that's like the, that's the common um uh let's say like, like philosophy going on um in the in the in this space right now you just model this successful person's sales funnel and then boom yeah you, you know you get sales coming in um but really sales funnels are not nearly enough like you need um uh, you need to actually have an authentic brand that goes well beyond your, your sales funnel. Like you know, know how, knowing how to deliver the results, knowing how to talk to people, knowing how to do the coaching itself, um, or if it's consulting, knowing how to do the consulting. Um, and uh, the sales funnel 
it, it, you, people can see right through it. If you're just copying someone else's sales funnel, it has to be really with your brand. It has to be really on brand for, for it has, that to work. It has to feel authentic. And I, and I think, and I actually think what's interesting for me is having kind of come from that more traditional background where, you know, coaching wasn't really co classed as coaching then. And, and like I said, I've been coaching for a long time, but I would never have put necessarily a coaching title to that at the time. Um, and actually, I wouldn't call myself a coach now, mainly because I'm far too opinionated and I like mm. to share my, my thoughts. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm Me too. More of a mentor. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So I think that it is changing. I think as people are being burnt, you know, I, I know for a fact that there are two um, Facebook groups that are completely dedicated to I've been burnt by a coach. Oh, um, and yeah, yeah I, was, I was able to get in for one, I was in for one day and they kicked me back out again. Um, okay. But when you, when you kind of read through some of the comments, there are a lot of people in there who've been either burnt from a training package where they thought it would be enough to kind of qualify them. Um, terminology is something that, you know, I, I come from a training and qualifications background. And some of the terminology that is used within the sales funnels is really, really misleading. You know, I don't believe that we should be offering guarantees. Because as a coach, you can't guarantee. No, you can't guarantee results. You can guarantee like uh, that you'll try hard to, and show up and, and be accountable. But you, can't, you can never guarantee a result, really. Well, if you're going to make a guarantee, then surely you should be guaranteeing money back if that doesn't happen. And I think that's, that's part of, and I know there'll be tons of people that disagree with me on it. Yeah. Um, actually, I think there's, there's being strong and steadfast in your belief of what you can achieve. But actually, I think for coaching and mentoring, counseling, all of those service-based industries, they are so reliant on the client doing what they need to do. Um, mm -hmm. That actually, guarantee something that is only maybe 50 50 at best in your control is a really to me is not it's not great practice um you know i think it, it is virgin on poor practice and potentially malpractice as well you're right and, and, and you're right i think in the sales lingo that that um that we hear often a lot of the times it's like you're going to achieve results like uh guarantee you'll achieve results it'll be really easy it'll be really simple but you know, I think where we both agree is that you it, nothing is, is like you need to put the work in. It require it's not going to be like automated like that, um, and it's going to require a lot of work and testing and failing um, for you to get it right. Yeah, it's some, something I've come across today actually. There was um, somebody's posted in the thread about working with a coach who who said they would guarantee. Now, obviously, I only ever hear the kind of one side of the story. So I do, you know, I'm hoping, you know, I do appreciate that it is one side of the story. So, you know, with everything, then it is, you have to be fair. But, you know, when somebody's guaranteed that they'll take them from five figure to six figure business, um, this whole, like it's Mecca, we're going to have a five, five or six figure business. And that's great. Like I said, we, we all need to make money. However, you know, it, there has to be, in my opinion, some quality assurance and some and standards in place um, and I think there's, there's a distinct lack of building a solid infrastructure so people don't have things like complaints procedures in place they don't have safeguarding procedures in place if you're a life coach in my opinion you have no choice but to have a safeguarding policy in place mm -hmm. to me that is you know one of the very basics and the very core fundamental aspects of what you do um, and lots of coaches have said to me, no, Charlotte, I just, you know, I'm forward facing. I just deal with people who are stuck. Well, they're not stuck with the forward facing issues. They're stuck with the previous history, historical issues. And you don't know what you're going to uncover. And I know that because for 12 years I worked with people and still continue to work with people who come to me with issues. And when we dig a little deeper, there's, there, that's not forward-facing issues. These are deep-rooted, entrenched thoughts and processes. And, right. and that takes skill and responsibility and oh, yeah. a safety to be the master. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, so what can coaches do to, um, uh, to be kind of like on the good side, on your side of the argument? What can, what can 
what can they do like us? One of the um, one of the things we've actually done for this is I realised that just raising awareness wasn't really going to be enough. So we looked into lots of the memberships and the associations that are linked with um, coaching and mentoring, and and actually what we found were that many of them wouldn't necessarily encompass all of the different skills and qualifications that some of the coaches were coming through. So what we've actually developed is a platform called the Happy Pursuit of Excellence. And it's all based around a quality mark. And we have five dimensions for effective practice, which are a really holistic look at um, coaching and mentoring entrepreneurs. So we have passion, power, planning, productivity, and performance. Um, and effectively, what it does is take coaches um, through a process and they have to demonstrate that they are investing in their commitment to creating a culture of excellence and it's a kind of roughly a 12-month process we're, we're hoping that we're going to slimline it down or people will be able to self-assess but for the short term we will be offering monthly learning bundles that take people so take coaches and mentors through the 23 core competencies that we feel are essential um, to showcasing this culture of excellence within the coaching and mentoring business and it starts with um, passion, which is all the personal development and you know, the why, the vision, the mission statement, um, the values, right the way through to, um, we've got a series of done for you policies and procedures, which will just really help cement that solid infrastructure. And that includes you know, the usual things like terms and conditions and GDPR, everyone's dreaded GDPR, um, but also then, we look at complaints procedures, we have safeguarding procedures, we have things like equality and diversity. So all of these, these policies and procedures that are in place that will really help to protect coaches, those they work with, and of course their business. And through doing that, the wider industry of coaching mentoring as well. Um, and we then continue that right the way through to the actual delivery, so being professional, having that credibility, showcasing, why um, and how they are being professional within their coaching role and then productivity is all about return on investment so we help coaches make sure that um, their return on investment is based on both qualitative and quantitative measures um, so we will be looking at is this service fit for purpose it is so much more robust than just looking at um, my client said yes yeah, she's happy so it's a really robust process that will eventually lead to the achievement of a quality mark it won't matter whether you're a member of any association or membership because it's a standalone and we purposely wanted it to be standalone because we really believe that it's it doesn't really matter what your background in terms of your qualifications and your toolkit that you choose to use actually this is about bringing robust quality standards, mm. quality measures, and quality controls into play. It's a really, really exciting time. Um, and I think the more we can talk about it, the more people are just, can really see the need for it. So it's really, I'm really excited about it. I'm really passionate about it and um, really excited to, to get it started and um, yeah. see what the future brings because we have to do something. We can't sit, sit back anymore and, and just let issues take place. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I, I, I want to check that out because that program, like, that seems like amazing for any coach, certified or not, just to strengthen your abilities. That sounds wonderful. Um, I'll definitely include a link uh, um, here uh, in, in this, below this video. Uh, that really does sound wonderful. So I, I, uh, I'm really glad you're doing this work. And uh, you're really making a difference in this space. Uh, it's definitely needed right now. It's a, a direct challenge to what we're seeing in the coaching world. And so um, right now, and, and it just, you know, it's just really needed. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 uh, I'm really glad you're doing this work. Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting for us. I think we're, we're, our initial cohort that we're looking to take on will be, we've got five stages of um, where coaches are in their profession. And that's right from novice, uh, right the way through to, you know, a real game changer, trailblazer. You've got 
you know, a team who may be delivering your own. And I think what's been really interesting is um, we've done some market research and given our markers and those people who I would have at, at face value put as trailblazers or game changers have actually not given themselves that title because they've mm -hmm. taken themselves to the kind of second or third level. So I think that's why I know that this peer, peer regulation and self-regulation will really work because those people who have high integrity in the industry, they don't want to be outstaged by those who don't. So, you know, it's a definite marathon, not a sprint. Um, mm. And I plan to be here 10, 20, 30 plus years time talking about the same thing. Hopefully, it's mm. improved. But I, I really, you know, I really think it's needed, and I hope that we definitely are a, you know, trailblazers in this industry by doing what we're doing. Well, I'm, I'm so thrilled to to know that you're playing the long game. I think that that's the key thing, maybe from this video, and that what we have in common is play the long game, not the short game. Um, uh, you know, taking the, the marathon, not a sprint approach. I think I think that's the way to go. Um, you just. You just it's just more rewarding that way and you get better results along the way and then you're, you can be a lot more patient with yourself. Uh, so, um, yeah. and, and, and I am so much better as a coach now than I was 20 years ago. You know, yeah. if I look back, at, you know, I wish I knew now what I knew when I first started working with, with people. Um, I really do because I thought possibly would have given different outcomes. I don't know, but you know, I, so I think, it has to be an ongoing process. There has to be that continuous development. And, you know, we'd be absolutely privileged to support those coaches and mentors that are prepared to, to fight and lobby for this change alongside with us. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Charlotte. I, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, today to share all, all that with us. Um, I really like where you're coming from. I really like um, what you're doing. And uh, I look forward to, to keeping track on, on how everything that you're doing proceeds and just everything in, in your life. So really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Oh, thank you. And thank you so much. The, the more people that will, you know, stand and allow me to talk about it, the better. And, yeah. you know, absolutely honored to, to be invited to, to come and chat. So thank you very much.